Hello, my God, and welcome to my tech fan. Minta sent me their new CD printer. This is the Magician X2. And at first, I thought, oh, another bed slinger and a sweet clone and similar. And actually, they wrote me that uh, they are working on the fast clipper version of the machine, but they also want to improve the existing models. And this is what I like with the Mingda that they take care of the existing models, not just trying to uh, put out a newer model every year. Let's see what specifications about this printer. This is entry level machine. It has auto leveling sensor, dual Z axis with two stepper motors, PI sheet, double gear direct drive extruder, filament sensor, and the touch screen. According to the website, uh, all metal heat brake is replaceable, so we can upgrade. And in that case, uh, we can go up to 300 degrees Celsius. But I would suggest to the Mingda that offer this option in the web shop. So maybe the user wants to buy exactly that version and he, he don't have to do it himself. And in this case, he can use those uh, technical filaments, which requires higher printing temperatures. Now, this uh, best slingers has other advantages too. Uh, of course, they are cheaper, but also they are quieter compared to those very fast Corex Y printers. But uh, let's see what's in the box. I can see they are one of the rare companies who are still using this white uh, styrofoam. Those white particles will be all over the object, but otherwise the packaging is good and everything is protected during the shipping. This was content of the box and uh, the assembling will be very simple because we have only a few elements to put together. This is the base, the whole gentry, this is the extruder, the spool holder, the power cable. It is very nice that we get this plastic box for the tools and the bolts, but definitely I would suggest to put some sample filaments on the spool because this, I really hate this kind of solutions. Before I continue with assembling, I want to see what is inside. For this I need a Phillips head screwdriver and first I thought I have to remove these uh, 8 screws only. But this is something you shouldn't do with your printer. It's still not coming down. There are hidden bolts too below the legs. For some reason they don't want us to open this. Of course you shouldn't do it, but definitely I don't think that they should hide these bolts below the legs. The power supply unit is here in the center and the output is 24 volts and 15 amperes. This is the screen from the back side and this is the main board unit. On this side I can see cables for four stepper motor drivers. X, Y. This is uh, motor ZA and this is motor ZB. So it looks like that uh, it has connection for the two stepper motors, but I'm not sure the drivers are below this heatsink. So I'm not really sure does it have two separate stepper motor drivers or the signal is just split to two stepper motors. In the meantime, I got the answer from the Mingda. There are two stepper motor drivers, but there is no need to use G34G code because there are two limit switches for each Z stepper motor. So probably it is lowering the X gentry until both stepper motors are not pressed. Currently, I'm not really sure where is the extruder stepper motor drivers. Maybe it is also below this heatsink, but I will not remove it. Uh, because the, there is a ribbon cable which goes into the extruder and interesting I noticed a wire it has a camera on it I didn't know it has a camera so I'm not really sure what does it mean in the meantime again I got the answer from the Mingda the camera function will be used for the next generation printer they plan to add some mini camera to the printer but for x2 this is not in use and here are the port, of course, from the outside, USB, big SD card. So this is what I really like. I hate those small TF cards. And this is the micro USB plug, of course, type C from the other side. And it's ready for assembling. And before you start, don't forget to check the voltage. If it's set correctly for your country, it's a little bit hidden, but it is there. In my case it is okay, 230 volts, because I'm in Europe, in US it should be 115. First step of the assembling is installing the gentry. It will be secured with the one biggest bolt from each side from the bottom. And then two smaller bolts from the side. The spool holder just snapping into the place. And then connecting the cables, these are Z stepper motors. Connecting the hotbed cable. This is one of the best solutions for the hotbed cable and first time I saw this on the artillery 3D printers. Great solution. The rebar cable connection. 
The wheels slot wheels are not tight on the hotbed, but it's fine because if they are tight in the factory, they may deform if they stay in the same position for the longer period. And then I noticed this. So here actually we have to place our fingers to leave this uh, PI sheet. And there is a limiter, so we can always place it in the same position very easily. It's a little bit hard to show to the camera. There are exactly nuts on the left side and I have to use this operand wrench to tie them. It's okay now. And we have these slot wheels on the Z and X axis too, because they also have to be tight. The X axis open and branch from the bottom, but for the Z axis, the method is a little bit different here. Now mounting the extruder, but let's take a quick look. And I can see too many fans here. I'm afraid it will not be so quiet like the previous Magician X, but I will measure that later. Two M4 bolts, but the other is from the back side. And connecting the ribbon cable on the right side. Printer is assembled, now I have to clean these white particles from the packaging and then I can turn it on and it is prepared for the auto leveling. Everything is connected and let's turn it on. I can hear a fan, it is very quiet but probably from the inside but nothing on the screen. Hmm. I wrote an email to Ming, then I got the answer to check this part here because it may be loose and yes, it's really loose. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I hope this will be the problem. And the second attempt. Oh, it's working. Okay, so that was the problem. Small detail I noticed about the bed. We have this limiter on the back side, but it limits only in X direction. And then we have the limiter in Y direction here. But if I place it a little bit to a side on the back side, in that case, uh, you can see now it is not in the center and here it is higher than on this side. Ju not a big deal, but uh, just uh, pay attention that it is always in the center when you place it back. It would be much better if this limiter in Y direction would be on this side too. The leveling will be very simple because there are no leveling knobs or springs and uh, actually there is no beer touch but a, a nozzle is mounted to some kind of uh, load cell or force sensor and it will actually uh, detect when the nozzle touches the top of the surface. Of course it is important that uh, before I start with auto leveling uh, this gently to be parallel with the bed. You can check this on several ways. For example you can use these lines on the back side uh, and to check is it on the same level or you can use some kind of distancers on two sides and to adjust uh, one side or the other with your hand to get this uh, perfectly leveled. Well, I already mentioned earlier that I got the answer. It has two Z limit switches and this step is not really necessary because uh, it will lowering the X gently until both limit switches are not pressed and with this it will make itself horizontal. Now let's go to the leveling and now it's preheating the bed to uh, 50 degrees Celsius and the hot end to 150 degrees Celsius and it will start with the auto leveling. Actually it will create some kind of offset mesh and if there is some inaccuracy in the surface then it will compensate it during the printing. The bed is leveled, actually the offset mesh is recorded and now it's time to insert some filament and I will not use these sample filaments, instead I will just try to print with this Polytherapy LA+. Plus. For PI sheet it is important to clean them with isopropyl alcohol before printing Actually, I should do this before the heating. Preheat, PLA. And two important things I'm missing from the package and those are pliers and metallic tweezers because if this is for the beginner users, maybe they don't have already from the previous printer. And there it is, it was tested with some white filament before this. One more interesting thing I noticed, I will do just uh, homing now. So that was X and Y. And for the Z, it doesn't use the nozzle, but it used some kind of limit switch. So I'm not sure why they didn't use the nozzle for the homing too. Only for the auto leveling. And for the first printing, let's see what's on the SD card. The G code should be prepared by the manufacturer. Card inserted. Print. I have the option SD or U disk, and there is a rabbit. 
that was the perfect first layer and later I will test with some bigger objects too but what can and I confirm that this is super quiet the printing is at 73% and it is still very quiet machine after all fans are working now the printing is finished few seconds ago and hmm, I was expecting to come out on this side Immediately I want to check the bed adhesion. Okay, it is great. I can feel it even on this purge line. I wait until the surface cools down and it should be easy to remove it. Almost every element on this rabbit looks great. This is the first layer. Even this overhang bell of the head is fantastic. And the only problem I can see here are these stringing between ears. But this is very typical for this small object where the nozzle is moving from one ear to another because it uh, don't have enough time for the layer to cool down. But as you can see, the stringing is one of those problems which can be fixed with the post-processing. Later I printed another one. This is from Kingroom PLA and it has less stringing. So maybe that polyterra needs to be dried a little bit. And now it's time to prepare the Cura and slice my own G-code. First I didn't follow the instructions but I used the profile for the Magician X, the older version. Printed in 1 hour and 45 minutes. And now let's check the quality. So not the fastest benchy but the quality is good. Perfect first layer, great uh, overhang, so the part calling is good too. Only I can see a few strings here and inside the cabin. And also Cura didn't hide the seams line. Usually they should be here on the corner, in that case they are not visible. But yes, quite good quality. Then I decided to follow exactly the instructions in user manual, so I'm adding here a custom FFF CD printer, renaming to the Magician X2. Changing the size of the printer, X, Y and Z direction, it has heated bed and 1.75 mm is the size for the filament. And with this I have smaller margin and I was able to add those uh, PLA plus profiles prepared by the Mingda. And I'm reprinting this bench and according to the Cura the printing time will be approximately one hour only. So this one is printed in one hour and 15 minutes, so half hours faster. Now let's compare the quality. Mm, they are almost very similar, so this one number two is printed faster and I can see less stringing on it, but I can see some under extrusion lines on it. It was printed on 200 degrees Celsius, uh, but maybe this is too fast for it or I should raise the temperature. With next printing I want to test the leveling of the bed because this printing will be only one layer thick, but it will use the whole printing area. Uh, this is a speed up video, time lapse of approximately 15 minutes. I can see in these three corners and in the center it is equal, only here it's a little bit uh, too high, uh, but uh, if the printing would be continued it would be finished correctly. Only here I can see small difference. And here I left some extra material because uh, it is easier to remove it, I don't have to start peeling. But it's coming down easily. With every CD printer I like to test the spiral or waste mode CD printing because some printers have a problem with this mode but here everything is ok, the moving of the nozzle is uh, smooth, there are no breaks or spots on the object. This is a small floating board from the printables and it can be printed in less than half hours. And it looks great. And my last printing for this video will be a longer one, several hours, and for this I will use this Kingron PLA filament in orange color. And I can see the color is changed. This is all from my review of more 3D scanner, and this will be almost 6 hours printing even if I use here that uh, new PLA Plus profile. Now I notice that by default uh, this object has a one wall thickness. This is not good because uh, I can see the infill, partly it's transparent, but I worry about those uh, big overhangs uh, where the head starts, so one wall thickness is not good. Not my favorite this PLA Plus profile. 
the progress is good so far but there will be two more hours of printing and uh, soon it will start the critical part, the head. Printed in 6 hours and 24 minutes. And now let's check the quality. Well actually it came out much better than I thought. Uh, it's a little bit transparent, I can see the infill lines but uh, it looks good. And uh, six and a half hours of printing without any problems. I'm in my living room now and sometimes I even forgot that uh, it's printing because it is so quiet. And now the conclusions. Well I will start with what I like with this printer and the most important is that it is quiet. So if you don't need very fast 3D printer and you are on a budget and you are using a printer in your office or living room, in that case uh, this may be a great solution because this is one of the quietest printers I tested on this channel. It has perfect cable management. I really like these uh, ribbon cables, especially on the back side for the hotted bed. And it is great that it used that uh, full-size SD card. I really hate those small TF cards, but it also can be used with a USB drive, which is more comfortable when you are transferring the files from your laptop or computer. And I really like, this is my favorite, the Textool PI sheet. Now there are some space for the improvements. And uh, for example, on the uh, bed limiter or positioning, uh, this in Y direction should be on the back side. I explained this uh, in the video earlier. And uh, this is not really a capacitive touchscreen, probably this fit in this budget, so it needs to be pressed a little bit. I think the hot and fans could uh, turn off when the nozzle is below 50 degrees Celsius. In that case, there is no need uh, for that additional noise. For example, you have all or night printing and it finishes either 1 or 2 uh, a.m. in the morning. In that case, when it cools down, there is no need for those hot end fans to work. I think the rubber wheels uh, are not really for the beginners because uh, they don't really know always how to adjust it, especially this on the y-axis is a little bit hard to access to it. Maybe they could move to the linear rails, at least on the y-axis. Of course, uh, maybe it doesn't fit into this price range, but this is my suggestion. And uh, sample filaments. Okay, so this may fall down from the spool. Beginner users don't know about this. They will start the printing and if they leave it here, this will fall down or, or create a jam or something like that. So I don't really like this kind of solutions. Overall, I had very positive experience with this printer, especially I really like that it is quiet. I mean, I'm doing these reviews in my living room because I have here a lot of natural likes. I don't have those artificial likes for the recording the video. And actually, I was even forget sometimes that it is printing because it is very quiet. If you have some other experience with it, you know, let me a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.